snow, snow, and more snow. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. So today is Boxing Day, and we are officially in lockdown again for two weeks, if it's over in two weeks. Um, so we just wanted to pop on really quick and show you what we've got growing on in here. Of course, our markets and uh, our markets are um, not running right now. For two weeks. So we keep working and get ready for them, right? Well, yeah. Lots when they start up again. Yeah. And uh, what we've decided to do is take on more of our CSA customers. Uh, we do have a waiting list so we can have people come in and do like a short CSA instead of a 10 week is our usual and uh, this will just run for a couple weeks and then they can order each week if they want. Um, but let's uh, bring them for a walk down and show them what we have new in the greenhouse right now. So here in the nursery, um, what do you have growing there? This is some Frise, first time we've tried this. It's actually looking pretty nice. It is. Uh, we'll see how it finishes off. We just planted that, on I'm not sure the date, probably two and a half weeks ago. Uh, but it looks good and if hopefully it turns out the way it's supposed to, we will uh, grow it in our in our ro rotation. Yeah. It's pretty and yeah. uh, it'll add to our solid blend. Yeah. So let's take a walk down to the bok choy. So we have um, already harvested some of this for our CSA and uh, people are loving it. It is doing really well. So we're going to keep growing this for the winter. This is something we don't grow through the summer months. And you want to explain why? Yeah, well, the, the bugs love it. Well, the, the flea beetles, which come around usually in, in May, late May, early June. They love the bok choy and they love arugula. So those are the two things we, we eliminate from the greenhouse in the summer months. Although we're going to try an experiment this year with arugula. We're going to cover the bottom of these trays and we're going to put some netting over and see see if we can keep it going because it's such a valuable crop but this bok choy is just it's just starting we started our first harvest last week and we'll harvest every week now till the end of end of may and it's beautiful stuff and this is still small and as this, the daylight get days get longer it just gets nicer and nicer Isn't this is gorgeous? a variety called joy joy to toy joy toy yeah through we got this from johnny's but it's i think it's available in a few different seed companies so it's a nice crop that it sells well at the market and it's a switch for our food program people you know from getting the same thing every week we're able to rotate two or three different crops now another crop we have growing um is our dill yeah we basically grow three herbs italian parsley cilantro and now we're gonna throw the dill in there just again give everybody a bit of a rotation. We put two herbs every week in our boxes and this will give us a bit of a rotation so that they don't get the same thing every week. Yeah. So I mean and it's a nice people people ask for it so it's it, it's an easy grower too you can see that's only uh two two and a half weeks ago that planting. We have another planting in the nursery. But with this I just want to mention um, with our dill it is not a cut and sell. We pick it as living so it has the root on it. It's a one-time harvest. Yeah. We'll get 30 bunches out of this tray. Two, we'll take two holes per, and put it in a nice bunch when it gets up 8, 10, 12 inches tall. Yeah, so that's something we have to do um, for everybody is do a harvest video. We, we try to do it, um, we've tried to do it on harvest day, but it's just way too busy, hectic, and we, we, don't, we don't have time. So what we're going to do is do a, har do a harvest video and uh, show you on a day that we're not doing anything but we're harvesting for ourselves or whatever so we will get to that and right here we have some younger bok choy which uh, is coming along well too so we have a lot of bok choy um, when we harvest this we put two um, two of these not that size of course when they're full grown two together and we put it into a bag but they, it does have the root on it so we sell it as living it does seem to take a while to get your first batch but once you get enough in here every week this is what we'll harvest every week there's four troughs so there's roughly 60 bok choy going to the market every week once it gets going yeah. and and program so yeah. what we do like to do is um skip weeks so we'll do um 
program, our CSA program will get a bunch of bok choy one week, but not the next because people generally, some would, but generally people wouldn't use it every single week. So we just give them a, a little bit of a change. Yeah, we alternate between beet tox, Swiss chard, and the bok choy. Mm -hmm. The other items they get pretty well every week, the herbs, the arugula, the lettuce, the microgreens, yeah. and potatoes and garlic. So. Okay, let's take a walk down to our watercress. So I'm not sure if we showed you um, our onions. Uh, this is basically for our own use. Uh, very slow growing, very slow growing. Um, but what we have been doing is um, cutting the tops off the onions and putting them into our clamshells with our um, pre-made salads. And people are really enjoying that. So let's skip down to the watercress. So here we have our watercress. Um, I love watercress, but the first time we grew this, we, it was so big and out of control because we didn't have the market at that time. Um, and what was happening, I'll show you. yeah, it was about six years ago yeah. that we tried that, eh? Yeah. Um, so what was happening is this grew so big and it just mounded down underneath. So what we're going to do is keep this on an end row and we can harvest but we're gonna harvest it as living. We're not gonna do any cutting, um, and we'll just continue to sell it like that. I love the flavor of um, watercress. A lot of people don't like it. We love it, and it just adds a little bit of uh, different flavor to your salad. So, But like I said, you don't want this to grow out of control because it's just a tangled mess. So once it's big enough, we will harvest as we do with um, cilantro, or parsley or whatever into bunches and uh, sell it like that at market and CSA. We've got tons of arugula now. I mean, we have all, you can see all the different rotations. We'll harvest that this week, maybe a little bit of this this week, then next week, then the week after. The it smell. Four weeks. Yeah, it's beautiful stuff. So and it, beautiful. it is a top seller anywhere at the markets, the restaurants, all our CSA people love it. Yeah. And again, what we've done is we used to do multiple cuts on this. We don't do that anymore. We find it more tender, and uh, it's really a quicker turnaround when we do that, eh? Especially this time of year, things are growing slow. And when things grow slow, that's when you start having problems with bugs and other things. We harvest it, get rid of it, and uh, just keep moving it out. And we've got a good schedule going now. You know, so we, uh, we go through about 20 pounds of this a week right now, so yeah. that's, that's quite a bit of arugula for a little operation like this. And arugula does not weigh a whole lot, so that just, yeah, yeah. But it, like it's, it's a, a lot. Really, it's a really good salt. And this is Astro, if anyone wants to know the, the variety. Astro. Beautiful stuff. And the, frag uh, the smell is just so fragrant. So I'm just going to give you a quick uh, peek at what Wayne's doing. He is taking stuff out of the propagation station which is the stuff that is ready to be put into the nursery under these lights. And I'll bring you over and show you. So here he has um, beet greens and we have our nursery troughs, which uh, there are about 60 holes in each trough. And uh, he is taking the beet greens. I just want to walk down slowly. Let me go on to the other side. This is a crop we get multiple cuts off of, you know, anywhere from three or four cuts. So I put, I, I want lots of weight, so I'm putting two blocks per hole. And that's how simple it is. Not much to it. I've got uh, two seeds in every block, so there's four seeds roughly in every hole. Uh, and you get the odd one that doesn't germinate or some that aren't doing as well. They're struggling a little bit, but that doesn't matter when you're putting multiples in. So about four weeks from now, we'll harvest this, cut this the first time. And Patty could take you back there and show you some stuff. But uh, probably in about two weeks, we're gonna harvest. But we, uh, we're just starting up this again too, because it grows pretty slow in, in December. And now that we're gonna start getting some nicer days in a week or two, uh, this will really take off. So this is one of the first crops I find that reacts to the, the longer days. You can really see the difference in the weight. Arugula too really reacts. Uh, it, it's a world of difference when you can get that extra hour of daylight. Now they, these will stay here from start to finish. We won't transplant these again, that's it. So they don't go into the finishing troughs like 
the lettuce. So the lettuce um, is, there are 16 holes in each, uh, in each trough, but these uh, stay in the nursery troughs. So here are some beet greens that we will be harvesting, uh, like Wayne said, in, within the next couple weeks. And these are about four weeks old right now from seed. So as you can see, they're doing very well. And uh, we'll be harvesting them soon. All right, so that's it for today. And uh, again, Merry Christmas to everyone. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We'll see you at the market in two weeks. That's the Hopefully. North Bay Farmer's Market. Hopefully. Yeah. Bye, guys.